Hello friends. <laughs> I hope everybody's doing well. I am doing pretty awesome and I'm going to be sharing some DIYs with y'all today. Some of these are ones that I've created in the past and some of these are ones that are new. Just a couple of them are new I think. I don't remember how many are new but you'll, ha you'll have to check it out to find out. But um, I don't know what else to say in the intro. It's part of a playlist but I'll tell you more about that in a little bit. And let's stop talking about it and let's start being about it and let's get to creating. On this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is our gray house. This first project is a sign that I got from Dollar Tree and I am using Waverly Wax in the color antique to stain it. I tend to, I kind of get my little piece of material wet dip it in the stain and kind of go over it that way. I know some folks paint it on and some folks paint and wipe and I don't know. This is how I do it. I am also doing the back because I want both sides of the sign to look finished just in case, not that you would really ever see the back, but just in case you did, I wanted it to look complete as well. Now that the sign is completely dry, I used my Cricut to cut out some decals that I'm gonna now put on the sign and I'm just kind of carefully going because sometimes those, especially those thinner letters, they lift up a little bit. So I'm just using this tool that I got from the Dollar Tree to kind of hold it down and pressing and going back over and pressing and holding down. And I eventually get all the letters on and I didn't have, I didn't have that much lifting. Now putting the words you pick and 25 cents on there. Now what I don't, these sunflowers are from the Dollar Tree by the way. And I'm just trying to glue them on and because the space between you pick and 25 cents was a little bit off. Like I think the you pick should have been a little bit closer together maybe. And the 25 cents, I don't know. I, I felt like it left a weird space right there. So I decided to go back in and glue a fourth sunflower. They have these out at the Dollar Tree right now, or at least at mine. And that's how that sign turned out. Pretty cute. Here's another look at how that first project turned out. I took a white pitcher and I filled it with sunflowers and I propped the little sign underneath it. I think I told you in the introduction that this video is part of a collaboration playlist. It's called the Talented Creators Collaboration. It's hosted by DIY with Aria, Lily D's Creations, the co-host is Z9 Designs, and the guest host is Dave's Wreaths and Things. And I'm gonna have a link to the all of their channels in the description box below as well as to the playlist. There's always, always tons of good inspiration, and I sure hope you check it out. All right, let's get back to the DIYs. I am just taking the smaller hula hoop from the Dollar Tree and removing that glittery paper that's on the outside, and I am leaving it black, although you could spray paint it another color. I got this balsa wood from a local hardware store. It's called Elliot's. I'm sure you could get it I'm sure you could get it at like Lowe's or Home Depot or something. I don't know. I've never tried to look for it there. I just know where it's at at Elliott's and that's where I got it. So I am just trying to measure it down. I did cut it a little bit larger than the hoop and I'm just trying to trim away, trim away so that I have it flush, flush, flush with the, with the hula hoop. Now it's time to stain that piece of balsa wood and I'm using Waverly Wax in the color antique to do this. Then I really, you know, I saw a lot of crafters using this for a long time and I, d I never bought any. And now that I bought some, I feel like I'm obsessed. I just love the color that it brings out. It's a nice, to me, a nice dark, rich color. Now it is time to add the floral foam and I am taking my, oh, I forgot to tell you, I got inspo for this project from a little bit of Colin Crazy. Is that her name? Oh my gosh. Yes, it's a little bit of Colin Crazy. I got these green floral foams from the Dollar Tree. I use that little thing that I don't know the name of it. I use that to kind of cut out a little groove for the hula hoop. And then I just put a bunch, a bunch of hot glue to secure it all down. Now I want to add a decal to the sign and I chose to, I cut it out using my Cricut and it says hello. Now the, you can write anything you want. You could write welcome, you could write, 
I don't, you could write anything you want. Howdy, if you wanted to, but I just wrote the word hello. I love how the white pops off that antique wax in the color, uh, no, Waverly wax in the color antique. I like how it pops off that antique color. I just think it looks so pretty. I got most of my flowers, if not all of them, from the Dollar Tree. And I'm putting in the sunflowers first, and then I'm filling them in with mums. There were these like red sunflowers and some other, I don't even know all the names of them. But I'm just kind of filling them in how I think they look nice and trying to make that little side look full. Now I've got to figure out where to put the hello, like how to position it. Should it be more this way, that way? Yeah, got to kind of figure that out. I think that looks good. So I am going to put hot glue down to secure it. And in hindsight, I guess I could have used E6000 or some other glue. I don't know, but I used hot glue. Hoping I don't get Captain's tail on the way. And just pushing down. It seems to be holding fine, but it is super hot in Texas. So I'll let you know if I have any trouble. And you can let me know in the comments below if I should have used a different glue. Here is how the wreath looks on my front door and I absolutely love it. I think it gives such a great pop of color and I, I used two suction cups to hold it up. I need a little bit better method for that. And I found that the floors were pretty heavy so it was making it tilt to one side. So I added some little weights to the back of the side on the right so that it would balance it out and then just stay nice and even. I did want to say that I have a crafting group on Facebook called Crafty DIYs on a Budget and I'll have a link to that in the description box below. I don't know why my hair keeps getting in my face, but um, there it goes again. <laughs> but anyway, it's just a group. It's a creative community that I'm trying to build up so that we can support and encourage each other on our creative journey. And yeah, so join it and uh, share what you're working on. All right, uh, back to the video. <laughs> Now, if y'all are my crafting besties, you know that I have a ton of scrap fencing material on hand and I love to use it for crafting. And I often find inspo on Etsy and, you know, just through Google. And so I found some gnomes and I thought they'd look great on tear trays. So I printed them out to the size that I needed and I started to trace them out so that I could cut them out with my jigsaw. And then I used Rust-Oleum's Chalked Ultramat Paint in the color Linen and I painted the whole shape and Captain supervised. <laughs> And I really don't have a firm plan on how I was going to paint this, but I started out with some horizontal lines and I used folk art paint in the color Faded Jade. And then I did add some vertical lines and I used the same color. And I'm still on the hunt for a really good jadeite color, so if you know one, let me know. I just want a vintage -y type color jade, but anyway, I think I'll know it when I see it, but oh, and I've got some help from Neo. <laughs> And sometimes I feel like, especially when I don't have a plan, like I just kind of go with it. And I added some lines. And I think I was kind of going for a plaid look, but I didn't quite achieve that. And I used folk art paint in the color Iced Coffee to do those other lines. Oh, well, there's a visit from Socks. Anyways, so let's be honest about this. I'm not loving the hat, but that's okay. And I used that Iced Coffee and painted on the sides for, the, for his outfit thing. And I used Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Snow White. And I'm going to use that to... We use that in a cheaper brush to kind of make his beard look more wispy. Is that a word? <laughs> and I'm going to use a smaller brush and try to define the beard a little bit more. And I use these half round beads that I had in my stash. I'm going to use folk art paint in the color linen to paint those. And I just take them, put them on some masking tape to hold them down while I paint them and then let them dry. And then I didn't want to do too much this little guy. So I hot glued on the nose and a sunflower. And this ended up costing me next to nothing. Now I'm going to make a girl gnome and you see me tracing on my shape on the wood piece so I can cut it out with my jigsaw. And like the other gnome I'm painting with Rust-Oleum's Chalked Ultra Matte Paint in the color Linen. And I'm just going to do like a check pattern on this one. So I put some washi tape down and painted it, let it dry. And I put the tape going on the other way, you know, as usual. And then when I pulled the tape up, I pulled up paint. So <laughs> let's go to plan B. I painted the entire hat portion in um, folk art paint in the color faded jade so we're starting over <laughs> and then i thought the watermelon color would really pop and it popped too much <laughs> so i tried to dry brush it and then i sanded it down and repainted the hat in the faded jade and then i repainted her outfit in the color iced coffee and while i was leaning towards that more minimal minimal look i didn't want it like too plain so i added some polka dots to the hat 
And to keep it the same as the other gnome, I, gnome, I glued on the nose and a sunflower in the center. And this cost me next to nothing, y'all. It's a very affordable piece for a cute decor piece. I cut out this kind of half, well, it's like a circle, but with a flat bottom. <laughs> and I cut out a couple of those because I'm going to be making some blackbirds or maybe some crows. I wonder, is there a difference between crows and blackbirds? If you know, tell me in the comments below. But I have this Rust-Oleum Chalked Ultra Matte Paint in the color Charcoal. And I've had it for a long time and it's lasted me for forever. And it was $32. So uh, it, it was a pretty good value, I think, for as long as it's lasted. And I'm, ooh, look, there's a spider. Did y'all see that? Ooh, arachnophobia. But anyway, I'm using this drill press to, oh my gosh, why am I showing so much of the spider? Anyways, I've drilled a hole in the top of that little half, that circle shape with the flat bottom because, like I said, I'm making little crows, blackbird things, but I'm going to take some chalk paint in the color white, it's probably Adirondack or something, and I'm taking the large sponge dropper brush that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm making two circles kind of swirling it around to get a good circle. This is so easy to do instead of trying to, to paint it by hand. And those are going to be the eyes. And then I am taking some orange paint and I made a little triangle for the nose. And I think I have to go over that a couple times because it doesn't really show up that well. This is an older project, but I really love how these turned out. So I thought I'd share them. And then I am taking a little um, sponge stopper thing and I'm going to be making the pupils of the eyes. And then I took some jute twine and a little bit of hot glue in that hole that I had drilled in the top and that's what I'm going to make. It's like little, I don't know, feathers at the top. I, don't, I just thought it looked cute like that way. So that's what I did. And it's really pretty easy to do. But I had to put a little hot glue on the end to kind of make it a point so that it would go down into that hole. And I'd put some more hot glue in there and then shoved it down the hole. And then I unraveled the jute twine to make it his little feathery stuff at the top of their heads, you know, a little more crazy looking. And that's how they turned out. I think they turned out super cute. <laughs> and I really like them. I had this grapevine wreath and I don't remember where I got that. But I am taking a little, or not little, jumbo craft stick, and I'm going to be painting it with Waverly Wax in the color Antique, and then I'll just kind of wipe it off. And I'm going to attach it to this grapevine wreath, because I'm making a little mini wreath, kind of to mimic the one that I made earlier. I'm taking some little sunflowers that I got from Dollar Tree and a couple extra leaves that I got from another project and just kind of hot gluing them to the side there. And then I'm taking a white paint pen and I'm just writing on the word hello. And I do have to go over it a couple times because I didn't want to really show up that well. <laughs> and this is how it turned out. So stinking cute. I, I really just love it. I'm taking a wood round circle that I got from Dollar Tree and painting on some Waverly Wax in the color Antique and then I'm wiping it off with a scrap, scrap damp piece of cloth. And I know earlier I said I just used the cloth. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But they also had these clothespins from the Dollar Tree, so I picked those up and I am painting the little ends with the Waverly Wax in the color Antique. And I'm painting some of them all the way with a nice bright yellow color. And then I'm going to take, see how I just kind of did the, here you see me doing. I did the little tips of them in the Waverly Wax and I'm doing the rest of them with that yellow color. I was going to use that wreath form that you see on the left there to kind of create this alternating clothespin type situation to make a sunflower. And instead, I decided to hot glue down the clothespins. And I tried to put the ones with the brown tips kind of in more, and the ones that I painted all yellow sticking out a little bit more. And I'm just going down and hot gluing them all down. This is a little bit tedious, and um, I'm not sure if there was a better way to do it. <laughs> but once I got them all 
glued down, I took a little, the end of my paintbrush and some more white chalk paint, and I'm just making little dots, little polka dots on there. And in that space that was empty, you can see I put two leaves and I'm hot gluing down some sunflowers to kind of fill in that little space there. I'm penciling in the word hi, I think. I don't even know what I wrote there. <laughs> we'll see in just a second. I'm taking a white paint pen and I'm going over it and it does in fact say hi. And I'm trying to do that faux calligraphy. I am also gluing on a piece of jute twine to act as a hanger. And I like to put a little piece of masking tape on top. I, I saw Holly from Hot Humble Pie do that. Anyway, and I, I thought that was a great idea to keep it secure better. Anyway, that's how it turned out. Super cute, and I just looks I just think it looks so fun. I'm gonna be honest, y'all. I don't really I don't really think this project turned out the way I had it in my head. But I had this little canvas board. It's not one of the canvases that's like you can take off the canvas. It's like a board. And so I'm taking some washi tape and I'm trying to make like a buffalo check pattern. And I'm using a little piece of washi tape as a spacer and I'm just taping down. And then I'm going to take a lighter color blue and I think it's not pool, but it's, it's like the pool color. Anyway, I'm just painting in where the washi tape isn't. I'm going to take off the washi tape, easy peasy, and I put the washi tape going the other way. And I use, again, a little small piece of washi tape as a spacer. I mark where the washi tape was not, like where there's a blank space, because this will help me when I place the tape back on after the next round. And I take that same color that I just used and I paint another coat. Or the washi tape isn't. Then I'll leave the washi tape on this time and after it's dry I go and put some more washi tape back where the original washi tape was. It's kind of hard to explain like just verbally but like, if you watch what I'm doing you kind of see what I'm doing. Then I take a darker color blue and I'm going to paint all the exposed area. And I don't wait for it to fully dry. In fact, I wait for it to barely be dry. And I start removing the washi tape. And then I had a little wood circle. You can't really see it that well, but I had painted it white and I'm putting on these smaller little sunflowers all around. And this is where it kind of doesn't turn out like in my head. Anyway, then I take the bigger one and I put it in the center. I don't know, I just thought it was gonna look fuller, I guess. And it just kind of looks like, oh, Okay, <laughs> but anyway, I hot glued that to the center of this little piece here, and that's how it turned out. Here we go, watercolor time, y'all. Get your paint brushes and let's get to painting. I took a brown color and I, uh, forgive me, I'm not really gonna give you the colors, it's just a brown color. You can use whatever color you want to actually. And I made a circle, and then I took a yellow color and I would recommend starting out with either a lighter color or a more thinned out um, mixture of that color, a little more water on your brush, if you will. And I start making some paint strokes out and those are going to be the leaves or petals of the sunflower. And as you can see, I had a little bleeding because I touched the brown pigment and it wasn't quite dry yet. So all you have to do is just kind of dry off your brush and then backstroke it a little bit and it helps pick up that paint. Does it make it perfectly clean? No, but that's okay. And then I take my heat gun and I dry it, this layer here, because I'm gonna go back in with another layer and ideally you would kind of darken up each layer so that way it would kind of give it some depth and dimension. And I just go around and I keep going around. You can do as many layers as you'd like. I don't know exactly how many layers of leaves or petals there are on the sunflower, but there can be as many as you like. So I just keep going around until I think the flower looks full. Now, admittedly, this may be more of a chrysanthemum look, but it's got like the center like a sunflower would be. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm just using a round brush to apply it. I think it's a round brush size eight. And you know, my leaves, 
or petals, whatever they're called. It's not perfect, but you know, I think it's looking pretty cute so far. And then I decided to take some various shades of blue. It's not just one shade of blue. I was kind of dipping in all of the blues there on that, the end of that palette. And I'm kind of giving it a background. And, you know, sometimes it's a little harder to keep the color consistent, to not have like backwash or, or you know, the um, blooms of color, if you will. But if you take your time, that's how it turns out. I think it's really pretty. And I always like to tape off around the edges because... For number one, I like to peel back the tape and look at the clean edge, but also I just think it makes it look nicer. And I think this would make a really pretty card. Thank y'all so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate the company in my studio as I craft and create. And I hope you enjoyed the projects that I shared today. Let me know what you think in the comments below and let me know I'm adding watercolor and I'm going to be posting more about watercolor. So if you like watercolor, I need to know because I'll share tips and tricks that I'm learning on my watercolor journey. And if you don't like it, let me know because this channel is about things that I want to create, but it's also about things that you might want to see me create. So I need that feedback as well. And if you want to follow me on social media, like on Instagram, on TikTok, here on YouTube, my handle is Our Gray House, but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. <laughs> Bye!